Purdue takes on Grambling State in the 116 matchup in the Midwest region. I'm going to deep dive Grambling State, including five things you need to know, a film breakdown, and a roster overview. Let's get into the five things that you need to know. Grambling State is one of the worst defensive rebounding teams in the country at 334th and 33%. So basically, 33% of opportunities that teams have to get an offensive rebound, they do. Purdue is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. That is something to watch for. Two, they force a lot of turnovers. This is a team that is able to force a lot of turnovers, a lot of live ball turnovers, and that is one of the key ways to beat Purdue. Number three, they take a lot of their shots to the interior. They like getting to pull-ups or floaters or really attacking the rim, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the film breakdown in just a second. But that, this kind of relates to also thing number four is that they have no issue running a lot of isolations. At times, they trust their guards to just basically have to create for themselves. There isn't always a ton of movement or anywhere else. It is just get the ball to our guy's hands and let him go to work driving to the rim. Thing number five is they have the fourth hardest non-conference schedule. Now in the SWAC, a lot of these teams just schedule gauntlets of non-conference games, getting as many bye games as possible, and Grambling State was no different. They, they had a ton of them, and although they didn't win any, it can just kind of help you improve as the season goes on. If you are enjoying, please like and subscribe. I'm going to have a ton of content out throughout March Madness. So... Going to some of the film breakdown, uh, this first play is Alabama State going to be on offense, and you're going to see not a lot of movement. So this first play, they're going to start in kind of just this isolated post up right here. Nothing's coming from it, and so now it's a kick out. And again, no real movement for Grambling, and it is another ISO. And so he's just going to try to drive Moten right here. And this is a pretty common thing for Grambling. They are very willing to get to isolation, just kind of allow their ball handlers to go to work. And, and this is one of those plays. They try to get to the floater, and they really, really want to try to get to the rim. They very rarely settle for jumpers out here. Um, this one's going to be a miss, but just that's kind of a normal possession for Grambling State. So when they aren't running isolations, then sometimes they will go to this kind of staggered pin down set. So what's going to happen is big man's going to come up here, top of the key, and then they're immediately going to kind of flow um, into essentially just a staggered pin down. And so you'll see like Illinois run this a lot for Terrence Shannon, just a staggered pin down, curling, trying to get the ball. Now they'll run a little bit of variations off of it. So this time, Dozier right here, double zero. He's going to curl, nothing's there. And then immediately it's going to be another pin down right here, this time for Mode. And so now as he gets the ball, you can see that this entire half of the cord is, cord is now cleared out. And so if nothing happens on that first stagger, this second pin down right here can flow immediately into a pick and roll. And so now it's an empty sided pick and roll. And then you're just kind of playing basketball from there, right? They're re reacting. They have some, they have um, right here, Smith rotating up. Um, and he is going to get a good look from three. Now, oftentimes they do just want to try to drive, drive, drive. Uh, this time with, with Smith being hot from three early, he's going to be willing to take it. But oftentimes this will be a drive to the rim as well. Even if he has a decent look from three, like he does here, which he does make. And so on the defensive end, they do a few things. One is ice ball screens, and we'll talk about that in the next clip. But they've also shown that when they're in the middle, they'll try and hedge. And so they basically just want to try to be as aggressive as possible against screens, try to force this ball handler out. You can see this hedge right here from the big. And so they just kind of want to keep this, this ball handler moving more east-west instead of north-south, knowing that they're going to have rotations on the back side. Now with Purdue, this is going to be Zach Eady rotating, and we'll see if Grambling has the size to counter that. But this is one of the things that they'll do, is just try to force the ball handler out. They'll switch guard-to-guard -guard actions like they do right here, right? As this handoff happens, they switch, just trying to keep the ball in front. And so then again, another ball screen, and now they're going to kind of ice this. And so we'll talk more about icing in the next one, but force sideline. And this time again, this big is going to kind of hedge, just make sure, making sure that this ball handler really can't get downhill. And then from there, you just play out. You keep rotating like they're doing here, um, helping at the rim, and just doing a good job there as they are able to contest and block that shot. Now, on the defensive end, um, Grambling State's going to try to be aggressive, and they just want to try to push the um, the the offense out as much as possible. And that's exactly what's going to kind of happen here. And so a lot of times what they do that by is by kind of icing these screens. And so what's going to happen is, as we kind of skim through here, Grambling is going to try and ice this ball screen. And so what that means is they're going to have this man kind of jump out here, and they want the ball handler to go sideline and go baseline, knowing that they're going to have help rotated down here. And so instead of the normal screen coming off here, they're really aggressive, just trying to force away from that middle, trying to force baseline, and that is what happens here. And so now defense is rotated. And then what they also can be pretty good at is kind of getting in these passing lanes. So you can see right here right now, he's going to have two guys pretty much um, as, as 
just kind of what he needs to do defensively. And now he's just kind of able to read and react. This pass, not a great pass, and that is part of why he's able to kind of get to it, but really good reaction time, really good just kind of hands in general um, that allow Graham Lake State to force a lot of its turnovers like that. So as we get into the roster breakdown, number five, Tremichael Moden. He is probably the most all-around best player for this team. 11.8 points per game, 2.4 assists, and he is absolutely the point guard when on the floor. He's also the best shooter on the team at 38.5% on, on high volume, and he's one of the more aggressive defenders too. He's willing to get into ball handlers, try to poke three steals. Number double zero, Contavious Dozier. He is their go-to score at 13 points per game. He shoots 33% from three, so you have to at least respect him enough out there. But at the end of the day, Dozier wants to get downhill. He wants to attack the rim. He wants to attack the paint, get to floaters or little pull-ups too. But he, more than anything, he is the guy that they can just give the ball to and say, go, go create something for us. Number four, Antoine Burnett. He is 36.2% from three, and he is the third leading scorer at 10.1 points per game. For him, it's either he's going to put up a three or he's going to get to the rim, where he does a lot of his, his work, um, is down low, getting to the rim. He's also a very good rebounder for this team um, and has been a pretty big piece for them throughout the season. Number 11, Jordan Smith. He is not a super efficient shooter, but these past few games, he has been very, very hot from three. It'll be interesting to see if that continues for him. But for him, what he brings is he's one of the better defenders on the team. And for a team that lacks a lot of size and true interior presence, um, he's somebody that can help protect the rim as a secondary rim protector. Number 12, Jonathan Eku, is the, the big for this team. He is the best interior defender, and he's just their main big man at 6'11". On offense, he's not featured too much, but when he is, it's always at the rim, whether it be on putbacks or just kind of little dump-offs. Um, he's also probably the best rebounder on the team, and if he's not, then he's number two behind Burnett. Number 10, Jalen Johnson, he's the backup big. Again, he mainly shoots near the rim on offense, um, and he just kind of spells Aku when, when the time is needed. Um, he isn't going to give you too much defensively, but he just kind of comes in for those minutes that are needed. Number three, Mikhail Stevenson is the backup point guard. He is a very, very pesky defender with one of the highest steal rates on the entire team. He's 32% from three, so again, you probably live with him shooting, but you don't want to give him wide, wide open looks. But he does a good job of being able to create for others, especially when he gets downhill. Number one, Jamel Kofer. He really hasn't played much all season, but um, especially as of late. But he's on this list because he had a breakout game in the play-in against Montana State where he was able to score 19 points on very efficient shooting. So we all know what happened last year. Purdue should dominate this game, but the path for Grambling State to, to win is to force turnovers, force Purdue to take threes and hope they miss them, and then also just get some tough shot making. And those are things that they are very willing to do as a team. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here to see the Wisconsin vs. James Madison preview.